Chacha desha tarine Vancha kaupater pyascha kripa sindhu baye vacha patitanam pavan ebyo vaishnavibyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome to the fourth class on Nectar of Instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. Uh, in the last class we were studying the six different items which are favourable and attitudes, favourable activities and attitudes and the unfavourable activities and attitudes. So we spoke about these things. Uh, we didn't fully complete everything. We were discussing tat tat karma pravartanat, right? In the purport, Srila Prabhupada describes two, two different uh, divisions of this activity. Who remembers what's the meaning tat tat karma pravartanat? Someone can tell me the meaning? Please, give me the name. Shilpa Sham Maharaji can tell us. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare um, Krishna. That, that, prav uh, that, that karma pravartanat means acting according to the regulative principles of hearing, chanting, remembering Krishna. And here in the purport, Prabhupada mentions also uh, abstaining from intoxication, meat eating, gambling, um, and uh, chanting the for uh, chanting Hare Krishna. Yes, thank you. Yes, Srila Prabhupada describes one stage, one part is yam and the other part is niyam. Just like in Astanga Yoga, Astanga Yoga there are eight limbs of Astanga Yoga and the first two, the first one is Yam and then Niyam. Yam means the prohibitions, the things which you have to give up, right? And then Niyam is the things which we have to do. So the Yam part, first part, give up all the bad habits, give up the intoxication, the gambling, the meat-eating and the illicit sex. These have to be given up and then what has to be taken up? What do we have to do? Right? We have to engage in the practice of the principles of Bhakti Yoga, the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. Regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga is not just don't eat meat, fish and eggs, don't take intoxication, don't gamble, don't do illicit sex. Regulated principles of Bhakti Yoga are chanting the Maha Mantra every day, a fixed number of rounds, then studying Srimad Bhagavatam, worshipping the deity, worshipping Tosi, offering water and bowing down to Tosi, these kind of things. Of cooking food, offering food to the deity. This, these are all regulative principles of bhakti yoga. So two parts to it. The yam and the ni, niya. The things which we give up and the things which we have, to, we have to do, we have to take up. We have to take up regularly hearing, chanting, worshipping, like that. And then Remembrance of Krishna will become natural. Is that clear? 
there's some is this some questions people have their hands up or uh-huh oh. now everybody load their hands okay so tat tat karma pravartanat practicing the regulative principles like hearing and chanting then next What's the next item? Sangat chiyagat. Sangat chiyagat. Sangat chiyagat. Giving up association of people who are not favorable to Krishna consciousness. Right? Sangat chiyagat. We have to. Who are these kind of people? Somebody like to tell us what kind of people are unfavorable to Krishna consciousness. Yes, Gita Induleka Mataji will tell us, an enthusiastic devotee. Gita. Hare Krishna Maharaj Dhanma Pranam. Maharaj the materialistic imperial impersonists and uh, all the, the yogi, uh, the jnanis, karmis and uh, atheistic. Atheists. Such people are not favorable, favorable to Krishna consciousness. So we should not associate with them. Asya sangtyat ei Vaishnav achar istri sang sadhu Krishna bhakta ar. One who is not a devotee of Krishna and, and who is who have much attraction towards the opposite uh, like females. We should not associate with them. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said. Okay, very good. Yes, right. We give up the association of the materialistic people who have no interest to hear about Krishna. Right, thank you. Very nice. Okay. And then, finally, satovrite. Who would like to tell us the meaning of this satovrite? Someone? Got their, uh, yes, Rohit Singha. Prabhu, Rohit Singha. Oh, is it Rohit? Or Rohit? Ratin, Ratin, Ratin Singha. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the mm -hmm. So, uh, Satogrite means that uh, following the footsteps of our previous Acharyas, <coughs> like uh, Rupa Goswami and other Goswamis, and uh, down the line, what Prabhupada has given us to raise school, we have to follow those rules and regulations. Okay. So, how are you going to do that? Follow in the footsteps. What do you mean? You have to go and live like Rupa Goswami and Vrindavan? You have to become a Babaji? Uh, no, Maharaj. So, uh, in whatever uh, sphere uh, we are having, uh, we are living, we have to be just 24 hours engaged in Krishna's service by any means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else would like to contribute to this? Let me see. Uh, who, 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 Mr. A R Rona Agarwal, is it? What's the name? Yes, Rona Agarwal. Rona Agarwal Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanam Pranam. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, it means following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas, like it's been said, we should follow our previous Acharyas, like Goswami and I and Prabhupada has given. Or it, we can do it in a way of associating in their Vani association. <laughs> Whatever instruction Prabhupada has given in the form of his books and his lectures and all, if we follow those things, then we can really walk in the path that he wants us, the way he wants to follow us. It's been also said, Mahajana Jaina Kathaya Pantha, we need to walk in the footsteps like prescribed by the scriptures and followed by our acharyas to attain to the national platform. Uh -huh. Would you like to specify some particular activities we could do following in the footsteps? Uh, we can chant Krishna rounds daily and uh, follow four the principles. Well, yes, that's the minimum. That's the bottom of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and also we can preach the Krishna consciousness to others as well. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a little more. Uh, un to understand uh, that particularly the, in in the implication is that our behavior should be like them. That not that we can just simply blindly follow the, their standards of devotional service, but at least we should try to behave properly. 
as devotees. We should show the good qualities of a devotee. Because one who is engaged in devotional service, he should naturally develop all good qualities. That is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. There's a verse there which describes that one who is a devotee will naturally develop all the good qualities. So, it means cleanliness, truthfulness, uh, freedom from the modes of passion and ignorance. And we will certainly like to do things like mark our body with tea lag and be neat and clean and, and these, these, these different activities, these kind of things. This, this should be uh, the behavior. This is following in the footsteps, keeping ourselves in a good condition, morally and socially. Is it understood? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Thank you very much for sharing the timing. Oh, all right. So, are there any questions about these six items which are favorable and unfavorable? Anyone like to ask anything before we move on? Giri Hari Prabhu has a question. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, here I found that in the second verse of the Parishamrita and also in the third. So both mentioning specifically about Sangha. So how important is this Sangha? And of course it's very important, but can Maharaj kindly explain to us more about well, why how is it mentioned two times also? Yes, right. You you you're observant. It's mentioned that both in that we should give up the association of bad devotees, and it's mentioned we should take the association of devotees. So, yes, Prabhupada said that uh, association is 98% of our Krishna consciousness. So it's really the major part of our Krishna consciousness, that we will reflect the qualities of the people we associate with. We like to develop our Krishna consciousness and it will come by proper association. When we associate with other devotees, we will also be inspired to develop the qualities of the devotees. So we want to be a little conscious, we want to be conscious and careful about how we select and we'll be talking, Rupa Goswami will go on to talk about that, about how to, you know, recognizing different devotees and how to relate to the different levels of devotees. So that's going to come up. We're going to talk about the different levels of devotees and how we have to reciprocate, how we have to deal with and uh, associate with the different devotees according to the level of advancement. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, some other questions there? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Who is this? Is this Ananda? Ananta Vijay Das has a question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dhanavat Prana, Maharaj. So, I want to ask that. Uh, is there any relation between these uh, six items which is uh, preferable to bhakti uh, and sat angasranagati uh, which is there in uh, song of bhakti in Otakur? How is the re relationship? Sat angasranagati. Oh. Well, well, of course. Saranagati, surrender, that we want, to, yes. we want to surrender to Krishna. So how do these items relate to surrender? It's all related to surrender. The cultivation of these six, the six activities, six qualities which are mentioned, 
and are all part of the surrendering process that we have to uh, cultivate these kind of qualities, right? That enthusiasm, patience, confidence. Yeah, we need these things. They're very important. Otherwise, how can we surrender? How, how can we surrender if we're not enthusiastic, if we're not patient and confident? It's, they're all very important in our surrender to Krishna. And we have to hear and chant as well. That takes also surrender to engage in the activities of devotion, following the footsteps. We cannot really separate these qualities from surrender, they're, but they're all directly related to the process of surrender. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, as you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. So as we surrender to Krishna, we'll be understood by as we, how we cultivate these qualities. These six qualities which Rupa Goswami has described, they're all conducive to surrender. All six of them, they're very helpful for our surrender to Krishna. And without these qualities, then how then we won't be able to surrender to Krishna. So these qualities are very essential. Rupa Goswami is describing, therefore, how we can actually begin to develop our bhakti in the beginning. Very important that we have to do these things. We cannot think. Of course, surrender goes on continually, and the same way, as we go on in Krishna consciousness, we have to keep these qualities, enthusiasm, patience, confidence, chanting, association, following the footsteps, cultivating the Vaishnava qualities. It has to go, they, they are, these activities all have to go on at the same time simultaneously. We want to continue our devotional service. As we continue our devotional service, we develop more and more these qualities. So it's all based on, it's all around, all centered around surrender. We cannot say anything separate from surrendering process. These activities which were which these six activities which are favorable, they're favorable in the sense that they they help us, they facilitate our surrender to Krishna. Right? Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. All right. Now, what about, we have some, quite a few, is, are these all questions which people have? Yes. Okay. Adi Raj Prabhu? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, sometimes because of our job, we have to mix or associate with uh, mundane, materialistic people sometimes because of our family also. How should uh, one? How should we conduct ourselves in these types of position? Well, generally, we don't want to make these kind of situations very intimate, because the people you're associating with are not in the devotional path, and they're not practicing regulated principles. So you may have to you have to associate with them due to your work. But you don't have to develop intimacy in these exchanges with them. Externally, you may have you have to show, you have to show some friendship. You have to show some. But internally, you should be thinking that I just want to get this finished with so I can go on with my devotional service. So it's like that. Externally, you have to put up that due to your karma, due to some arrangement of Lord Krishna, you're in this situation that you have a job or you're working, you're with people who are not devotees, so you have to tolerate it, you have to go on with this, 
because you have to maintain yourself, you need, you need a job, but don't get intimate with these people, you know, don't, you don't want to be going eating food with them, you don't want to be too much socializing with them, socialize with them as little as possible, because you know, they're not in the devotional path. But externally, you have to put on the show. Yes, yes, you know, you have to, you're my dear friend, you know, wonderful, you know, you're working with people, you know, you have to have a good relationship. Yes, we've got to work harder. Yes, we've got to make more money for the company. But internally, you should be thinking, oh, when will this be over with and I can go back to read Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. So like that. Hmm? Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All right, we'll, we'll just hear a few more questions. Uh, Dina Vatsala Prabhu? Dina Vatsala Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu? Can you, have you unmuted yourself? I can't hear you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhu. Jaya Mr. Bhaiya. Parvaya, ini kan dibuatkan di Lokka 2. Tentang prajalpa, prajalpu, ya. Bahkan di kalangan uh, internal atau di body, kalangan terima kita sering melakukan prajal tentang bergosti, bergosti uh, berdiskusi tentang bola dan sebagainya. Secara tidak sadar kita melakukan ini. Dan ini secara tidak sadar terus kita lakukan. Bagaimana, bagaimana caranya kita agar kita bisa mengenali prajalpa yang Hare Krishna Maharaj, so his question is, in the second verse there is a mention of Prajalpa uh, as one of the items that hinder uh, or spoil our devotional service. Uh, but uh, we, we see that even amongst devotees this happens uh, and uh, many times happens unknowingly. How could we uh, avoid this uh, in our association amongst devotees? Well. If you see people talking Prajapa, you want to run away, you want to get away from that. Uh, just take shelter of the holy name. Other people are not talking about Krishna, don't get involved. Don't be drawn into that. Don't be drawn into their situation. Leave them. If they're talking Prajapa, that's their foolishness. But you don't want to get caught in that. You want to take shelter of the holy name of Krishna, you want to take shelter of thinking of Krishna, bring your mind to Krishna. And you should feel sorry for these people. But unless you're an authority figure, unless you have an authority there in the center among the devotees, you don't want to go giving them instruction. Rather you just want to show an example. The, best, the better way to instruct people is to teach by your own example. If you yourself don't talk Prajalpa and if you yourself are always thinking of Krishna and chanting the holy name of Krishna and talking about Krishna, that's the best way to teach others. That's the best instruction you can give to others. So, you know, they're talking Prajalpa, you just go away, you find some other place where you can go and chant without being disturbed by their Prajalpa leave them. That's their maya. Their maya doesn't mean you have to get involved. All right? Is it clear? Want to yes. ask, you want to ask more? Yes, Tvarat, it's clear. Okay. All right. So we have some more a couple of more questions. Archana Bhakti Radha Maharaji has a question. Hare Krishna, uh, Pranam Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I wanted to ask in the text, uh, in the book it said, endeavor executed with intelligence in Krishna consciousness is called utsaha or enthusiasm. I wanted to un understand this Maharaj. I was not able to understand. How, do, how does one... Uh, you know, endeavouring with intelligence and Krishna consciousness. Can you a little bit elaborate on it, Maharaj? Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, that's Prabhupada's definition of enthusiasm. 
Very nice definition, right? Makes us think. Yes. So, you know, sometimes we think, we have the idea that enthusiasm just means, you know, you know, run off and very, do something with a lot of energy and don't really think about what we're doing. Sometimes we don't think about the consequences, just like sometimes in the early years of our movement, devotees would be very enthusiastic to distribute books and they go to great extremes in order to distribute books and to collect donations from people. So that was an enthusiasm, but often their enthusiasm would create the bad impression on people. So the, the point is, Prabhupada is saying, endeavor, yes, endeavor, but with intelligence. And so we have to be thoughtful. It takes a little intelligence to understand. We have to be careful. Are, are we going to give people a bad impression or a good impression? We have to think carefully about how we deal with people and how we're behaving when we're doing things. You want to put on a festival, you want to do it in a manner which will create the nice mood, which will give friend, friendly relationships and bring the support of the public. If you simply make enemies, then it's not good, right? Sometimes we will do things and we just make enemies. People just end up disliking us. And they simply see us in a, in a bad way. I mean, they see us as some, you know, cult or some beggars. And they think we're, we're poor, that we, have, we don't have any money, and therefore we're, we're out begging every day. So we have to be a little intelligent and think carefully about how we can best uh, direct our energy in the service of Krishna. So intelligence, you, intelligence is a very important function, it's seated next to the soul, right? It's, the mind is higher than the senses and intelligence is higher than the mind. And intelligence is seated next to the soul. So, you know, it's, we have to get that in that direction also from the soul, how to use intelligence, how to work nicely in the service of Krishna to produce a good Krishna conscious result, to help people have a good opinion of the devotees and of the Krishna consciousness movement. Important. Okay, thank you Madhiji. And Thank you so much. And then there's one question. Ratan Singha has a, a question, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. So, my question is that uh, during the discussion of uh, third verse of Nectar of Instruction, you uh, told about Avasya Shiva Krishna. And also in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna confirms that uh, Kanti Apriti Jani Hi Name Bhaktiya Pranashati. So, Maharaj, I wanted to know that uh, what kind of protection is this? Is it our protection of the spiritual advancement, our spiritual consciousness, or is it material also? Because sometimes in the devotee community, uh, this is slightly misunderstood and uh, people think that, okay, I'm, I have become devotee and Krishna will maintain all my things. So, uh, how to understand this? Well, that's up to Krishna, how he decides to use, to give protection. Generally, it's more in relation to our spiritual progress, that we won't fall away from, we won't forget Krishna, you know, that our bhakti cannot be lost. We see Prahlad Maharaj, of course he was protected by Krishna, because he was always remembering Krishna, so no danger could come to him. And the Lord gave, an, he gave a promise that the descendants of Prahlad would also be protected, that they wouldn't be harmed, they wouldn't be killed. So it happened that Banasura was born in the family of Prahlad Maharaj. So Bana had, a, you know, 1,000 arms and Lord Krishna saw he was very proud. And he cut off his arms, left him with four arms. 
But because he was from Prahlad's family, he didn't kill him. But he took away his pride because he was very proud having a thousand arms. So Lord Krishna reduced his pride but didn't kill him. So Lord Krishna knows himself what is proper. You know, we cannot think that because I'm a devotee of Krishna that I won't get ill, I won't die, I won't get disease, I won't die. We can't think like that. That's foolish. Just like if you know there's a tiger in the forest, you can't think because I'm a devotee of Krishna and Krishna's in the heart of the tiger, Krishna won't let the tiger eat me. You know, you, you can't, that's madness to think like that. But sometimes devotees are so foolish, they think like that. You know, they have that kind of foolishness. But Krishna will protect me. <laughs> yeah, Krishna can protect, but mainly he's protecting our bhakti, that our bhakti is never lost. And we see like Chitraketu, Chitraketu was cursed by Lord Shiva's wife Parvati, who was cursed to become a demon, Vritasura. But even in the body of a demon, Vritasura, he never lost his bhakti. His devotion was still there. He kept his bhakti. So, so generally the Lord is protecting our bhakti. Sometimes he may also protect the devotee. We don't know. And certainly uh, Maharaj Ambarish was protected from Durvasa Muni. Ah. <coughs> it's up to the Lord. He knows. He will decide what in what way he should facilitate our path back to Godhead. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, but, uh, we'll just have one more question from Premadan Prabhu. Last question. Yes, yes Prabhu. Premadana. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So, I have one question, Maharaj. Uh, here is mentioning that uh, those who are following this uh, principle uh, will assure complete success in your devotional service. So I want to know when this actually the purity will take place, Maharaj. So uh, can we say that uh, after following uh, this principle, immediately some uh, someone or somebody uh, uh, devotees uh, become pure like that, or we uh, we have to wait for uh, some time? How is this process is uh, will uh, uh, means that you, the purity will uh, take place, Mara. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Yes. Well, it may take a moment, it may take some time, it may take even maybe the whole life. But we have to understand it depends on our own self. How much are we able to give ourselves to Krishna consciousness? How much are we able to surrender, as we said? It's not that, you know, Krishna will just do everything for us immediately, but it will depend on us. As we surrender, Krishna rewards accordingly. So if we fully surrender to Krishna and take full, of, full shelter of Krishna consciousness, completely giving up all of our attachments and all of our plans for enjoying the material world, then Krishna can arrange rapid advancement. But it will depend on us how much we're willing to reciprocate, how much we're willing to give ourselves up to Krishna. Right? It's a, recipro it's a, re it's a reciprocation between Krishna and the devotee. It's not just up to the devotee, but it's also up to Krishna. Krishna will decide. Krishna may decide, you know, this devotee is not ready. No, I want this. Krishna may want this devo devotee. may think the devotee needs more time. Let him wait. Let's see how serious he is. Is he really genuine? You know, we do see sometimes devotees try to advance too fast. We talk, we, we, we talk about premature transcendence. You know, we, we think I'm completely free of all material thoughts and, and desires and we give up everything 
and then in a few, a few months later, you know, we're back in the material world. You know, what happened? Oh, I don't know. I, well, I'll become Krishna conscious later. You know, <laughs> you know sometimes. So this kind of thing, up and down like that. So Krishna is careful about giving pure devotion. He rarely gives pure devotion. Rarely. Pure devotees are more merciful than Krishna. The pure devotees may give. They, they, may, they give the chance to someone to become a pure devotee. But not everyone is able to take advantage of the opportunity given to them. Mm -hmm. So, we have to be cautious. We have to know what rough, we have to know what we're capable of, how much we're able to handle. Okay, Prabhu, thank you very much for your questions. Thank you very much, Maharaj. All right. Maharaj, yes. Actually, uh, there have been a couple of questions on the chat for a while now, I think. Uh, I, I don't know if you got a chance to see the chat. Really? No? They're still there now? They're, yes. st they're still on the chat? Yes, questions are still on the chat. I think they sent it around half an hour back. Uh, funny, uh, should I read them out to you? Yeah, can you read one out? Yeah, okay. So one question is, uh, to the question of association, there is a concept of Dharma Dvaji. Can you explain more, please? Dharma Dvaji. What's this? Hmm? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not so familiar with this term, Dharma Dwaji. Would you like to, the person who put the question can explain to me what he means, what he's referring to? Uh, I think he's saying it, it's someone who dresses like a devotee but is materialistic. Okay. So he's, what does he want to know? So, to the question uh, of association, I think he's asking who dresses like a devotee. What about associating with people who are dressing like a devotee but are uh, materialistic, actually? So we'll look at this when we come to association with devotees. That's more connected. You know, if you know someone is just simply dressing like a devotee but is actually materialistic, then it's not very good association. Rather, we can respect them in the mind, and we can also offer respect to them, you know, they, they, they look like a devotee, okay, they're dressed like a devotee, maybe they don't behave like devotees, maybe they're not chanting, and they have some bad habits, so we, offer, we, we show some respect to them, but at the same time we don't want to associate with them, like that. Okay. And the other question on the chat? And the other question was, I think you were talking about how, you know, at work, at a workplace, we sometimes have to put up a face saying that, you know, uh, we are enthusiastic about working and things like that, but in actuality, we are eager to actually progress in Krishna consciousness. One person is saying, is that not duplicity, Maharaj? You know, outside we're putting up a face that we want to progress materially in front of our work. Uh, colleagues and things like that. So, I think that's what the person is referring to. Are we being duplicitous? No. Uh, yes, Maharaj. No, I would say we're simply being practical. That you live in the material world, you have to live in the material world, you have to, you have to maintain a job. And so externally, you talk like, we have to talk like that, we have to associate with materialistic people. We don't want to be unfriendly with them. We don't want to make enemies with them. So externally, at least we, but we don't, but we, we're careful not to get too much intimacy with them. It's, it's not being duplicitous, it's just simply practical. You have to, you, you're doing business, you're working in a job, it's like business. When you do business, you have to do these kind of things. Just like in business, the man will say, oh, for you, I'm, I'm not making any profit. I'm giving you the best price. You know, you, ha you have to talk like that. You're doing business. And so the same way, you work in a job. 
You have to do these kind of things. Yeah, you have to be a little bit duplicitous because it's a material world and people are duplicitous. But we're duplicitous for a good cause so that we can be Krishna conscious, to protect our Krishna consciousness. It's not a fault, rather it's an attribute of a devotee, that the devotee is expert, that they can adjust to different situations. All right. We read about Raghunath Das, you can read Chaitanya Charitamrita, Raghunath Das Goswami, how he dealt with the Muslims, that at one point there was a problem for his uncle, some big money had been corrupted, but Raghunath Das was so expert he could solve the problems because he knew the art of diplomacy. So we have to use these things in the service of Krishna. All right? Yes, I, I, I think that was, I, I, I don't see the replay of the person on the chat. You want to be so honest, you know, you're, you want to show everybody you're a devotee, you go out there and you just tell them about Krishna, you won't keep your job very long. You know, you've got a job, you have to do the job, you have to do what's required. So you have to adjust everything, time, place and circumstances. Because of your karma, you have to work, you have a job. And the job you've got is given to you. Somehow you have to, you have to do it, you have to maintain it. So you have to show some kind of enthusiasm for the job and like that. But in your heart, we should always be thinking about Krishna, and desiring that, oh, soon I can go home and do my puja and chant Hare Krishna. It's not na unnatural. The ordinary man, materialistic people, they're also thinking about going home, being with their family. So we're thinking going home, being with Krishna. No difference from anybody else. Thank you. All right. Yes, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go ahead. We want to go on to text number four this evening. Uh, wait, I'll share the screen here. Okay. What do I do? Share screen. Huh? What did I, then I hit this? Oh, sorry, sorry, they have to make you the host. So, Dhamma Prabhu, can you make Maharaj a co-host so he can share his screen? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Done. Okay, now what, do I share the screen Maharaj, again? you can share your screen right now. If you click on the dot, 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 in the more on the bottom right. Really? Click on that, share screen. Okay, I have to open that. And I, we're on text number. It's not being shared? Okay, can everyone see this? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. 
Maharaj, you can make it full screen, Maharaj. Thank yeah, you so I'm much. trying. I just there's so many things on my screen. I'm trying to take them out so I can open the PowerPoint. Okay, now you can see it. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay, lesson three: six kinds of loving exchanges. Upadesh Amrita text four. Revision. We have tried to uh, uh, explain the six favorable and unfavorable attitudes and activities as in text two and three. I hope they're clear to you. Uh, we also spoke about Prabhupada's mood in adjusting religious principles in relation to Niyam Agraha and listed examples of such adjustments. Do you remember some of these adjustments which Prabhupada made? Someone can give an example? Maharaj, uh, Prabhupada crossed the sea to preach. He went to the western uh, country to preach. Okay, usually sannyasis won't cross the sea, but Prabhupada crossed the ocean, yes. Someone else give another example? Women, brahmachari asha? Yes, the brahmachari is not supposed to see women, but we have, women, we have the brahmacharini ashram. So you have men and women working together in Krishna consciousness. Yes. Hello. Yes. Next one. Hare Krishna. Yes. Usually, <coughs> previous time, Brahmacharini not allowing stay in the temple, but now Prabhupada allowing even as a pujari. Thank you, Maharaj. No, we had that one. Pujari, women as pujaris. Huh? Okay. Women also can do puja, yes. All right. Women also on the altar, worshipping the deity. Anything else? Uh, one person at a time, can we have... Yes. Maharaji, Maharaji. Who? Maharani. Maharani Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, he reduced the number of rounds for uh, West, because the Western devotees couldn't chant 64 rounds per day to 16. Yes, very nice. Thank you very much. Very good one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Really? Let's hear the others. Priya Govinda. Who? Priya Govinda. Priya Govinda Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Shira Prabhupada accepted Guru Puja in front of the deities. Okay, yes, good. Ramesh Sharma. Ramesh Sharma. Prabhu, Ramesh Sharma. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, my, my, my answer has given already, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Yes, someone else? Ganga Prasad. Ganga Prasad. Yes, Hare Krishna. Yes. Prabhupada uh, making his disciple. Uh, okay, he did the marriage ceremony for some disciples. Although he's a sannyasi, usually sannyasis won't take part in the marriage yagya, but Srila Prabhupada arranged the marriage and performed the marriage yagya for them. Okay? Yes, that I mean, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Ganga Prasad? Maharaj, my two points are already mentioned. Okay. Accepting worship before okay. the altar and officiating the Vaha Puja for the disciples. Okay. Those are the two points I wanted to mention. All right. And then there are the uh, Archana Bhakti Radha Mataji has a point. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, actually, Prabhupada accept the title Prabhu Srila Prabhupada. Uh, and his uh, god brothers were not at all happy about the whole thing. They were astonished how he could use that uh, title, which was uh, which was actually for his uh, spiritual master. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And what did? Thank you, Maharaj. Adi Raj. Huh? 
Adiraj Prabhu. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, he, he allowed devotees to do the book distribution and uh, karmi clothes. Yes, right. Thank you. Yes. Okay, these are all very good points. Yes, all valid points. I think we've covered everything. Anybody got a point we not you didn't mention so far? No? Okay, good. Yes? Dina Vatsa? Yes? What? Which? But Maharaj, you, you asked him for another Pandit. So Prabhupada using material things uh, in order to support Bhakti, it's like uh, wealthy things like plane, also Prabhupada using a luxury car. So never been uh, done by any sannyasi before him. So Prabhupada is not rejecting material things. And because material things is, some people say that it's not supportive to bhakti, but Prabhupada using it for bhakti. Okay. He said like that. All right. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj and our pranam. Uh, Sula Prabhupada. So Sula Prabhupada instruct his disciple as Sula Bhakti Swarup Dhamadhar Maharaj to continue uh, the material education until professional or professor degree so that they can preach in the university's area and also be educational uh, people educated people. All right. Yes, Prabhupada wanted scientific preaching, qualified people to preach to the professors and the scientists, because in this age there are no Brahmins. In this age it's not the Brahmins who lead the society. In this age everyone is influenced by scientists. The science, scientist's position is very prominent in society. So Prabhupada certainly wanted preaching to go uh, in, in the scientific field and he particularly requested His Holiness Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj to do that work, to complete his PhD and to preach to all the scientists. And he did it. He was very successful. He did a lot of work preaching to very important scientists introducing them to Krishna Consciousness and putting on scientific conferences. Okay, very nice, very nice points. Thank you very much. All right, then discuss their plans for... What's wrong? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, you want to say something? Say quick. Yes, yes. Uh... I wanted to say that uh, Prabhupada accepted devotees from all castes and races to be his disciples. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Prabhupada preached to everyone without discrimination. We'll look more at these points in coming lessons. Okay, discuss their plans for applying points relevant for them from text 2 and 3. So we spoke about we spoke a little bit how we can apply these points in our own life. You know, maybe we're being uh, over and we're over endeavoring, maybe working too hard for material goals, maybe we're uh, collecting too many things. Devotees also can be guilty of atyahara. We have so many things at home. So many dhotis, so many saris, so many bead bags, so many japa mala, so many deities, so many pictures, hardly we can use them. Sometimes we collect too much. So try to keep simple atyahara, be careful, don't get entangled with atyahara. And concentrate more on hearing and chanting, tat tat karma pravartana doing that. All right, we'll go ahead. Control. So text one, controlling the six urges. 
right? Everyone knows this verse now. You've all learned this verse. And then text 2, the unfavorable activities, because text 1 was describing the urges, and when the urges are not controlled, then you get the unfavorable activities. So, then text 3 goes on to describe the favorable activities, what we need to do, what activities and what attitudes we need to cultivate. So I hope you've all memorized these first three verses, right? The, this is memorization slokas. Now we're going on, text four, the six loving exchanges. Who would like to chant for me? Somebody? Some volunteer who can chant? Myself, Ganga Prasad. Okay, go ahead, Prabhu. Kanai Mar. Ganga Prasad. Dadati Prati Grenati. Guhyam Akyati Prichati. Bunte Bojayate Chaivam. Sadvi Dam Priti Lakshanam. Okay, you want to. Offering gifts in charity. Accepting charitable gifts. Revealing one's mind in confidence. Inquiring confidentially. Accepting prasad and offering prasad are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. Okay, thank you. So, dadati, give charity. Now, that's discussed in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Three kinds of charity. Who can tell me what are the three kinds of charity? Yes? Who? Who? Radha Kishori. Radha Kishori Maharaji, three kinds of charity. Please accept my humble obeisances. There are three types of charities. Uh, uh, one charity is done in the mode of goodness, and the other is in the mode of passion, and the third is in the mode of ignorance. Yes, uh, right. Can you describe them for me? Would you know? A little bit? Yeah, yes, uh, I can try. So, uh, charity in mode of goodness is given to an appropriate patra, as in, uh, to a person who deserves it at an appropriate time and um, with any intention of getting anything in return. Mm -hmm. And uh, charity in mode of passion is uh, given um, when, we when we expect some charity or, or when we expect some fame or uh, uh, some name uh, in return of that and uh, mode of goodness uh, mode of ignorance charity is given to a person who does not deserve it and who may use it for um, some wrong activity yes thank you very much can you give an example charity in the mode of ignorance uh, for instance if i if i if i give a beggar 50 rupees and he goes and uh, buys alcohol and drinks it so, right or he takes BD like yeah. that yeah. so then you get the karma for that, right? I get 50% karma. <laughs> Only 50%, yeah, maybe, at least, oh, yeah. that's <laughs> maybe more. Okay, maybe more. 50 rupees worth of karma. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maharaji, very good, yes. So, so dadati prakriti. prakrigrinati, you give charity and it, we also accept charity. No, as brahmanas, a brahmana has uh, allowed to do these things. Someone who is a brahmana, they can give charity, they can also accept charity, they can also worship the deity and teach people to worship the deity. And they can teach the scriptures and they can also uh, study the scriptures. So, it's said sometimes that in the Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga Brahmanas are expert in only one of the six activities. Which one would... Could you please mute yourself if you have children there in the background? Can you please close your mics because it's not very good for us to have to hear the sounds of the children when we're trying to give class. Thank you. So, brahmanas, 
can worship the deities and teach to worship the deity. They can study the scripture and teach the scriptures. They can accept charity. They can give charity. What are they good at? In Kali Yuga, good at only one thing, accepting charity. They don't, they never give charity, never teach anything, never do, they just simply come and want money. So that was why the caste system fell apart. That's why uh, the Varnashram system failed, because of the degradation in the Brahminical class. Anyway, this is an important principle. Giving charity, you have to know who to give charity to and accepting charity also. One of the devotees, uh, one senior devotee, a lady, Malati, who was a very senior devotee, very close with Srila Prabhupada and with her husband they helped to begin the movement in, in England. She was one of the three householder couples who came to England. So Malati describes how one day they were in India and they were doing Sankirtan. And they were having, I think it was, a, you know, maybe it was like Rati, yeah, they were doing some Sankirtan through the town. So some of the merchants came out and they saw the devotees. So some merchant came and, and wanted to give Malati some cloth. And she went, no, 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 I don't need anything, no thank you, I don't need it. And Prabhupada got very upset with her and said, no, it's your duty to accept it. It's your duty to accept it. People give you something, you should accept it. Because you're representing Krishna. And so they see you like a Brahmin, you see you like Brahmanas, and the people want to give something, let's say they feel inclined to offer some gift and charity to them, it's the duty of the devotee to accept it, right? And then next is described, guyam akyati prichati. Guyam means confidential, raja vidya raja guyam, Bhagavad Gita, this is confidential knowledge. So guyam akyati, explaining confidential topics, prichati. You know, explains and or hey, prichati inquiring prashna prichati right guya makyati prichati so inquiring confidentially and revealing your mind in confidence explaining these things so confidential topics I mean confidential topics in relation to Krishna and in relation to our practice of Krishna consciousness. So this is something which we will do with the appropriate devotees. Devotee who you have a, that kind of relationship with, you can reveal how you're planning to serve Krishna or what are the obstacles which are facing you in your Krishna consciousness. You may do like that with the appropriate devotee. And then, bhunkte bojayate chaiva, eating and feeding, right, offering foods and accepting foods. So this is of course a major part of our Krishna consciousness movement. Sometimes Krishna consciousness is called the kitchen religion. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking and offering and we're meant to distribute the food and of, sometimes we will distribute the food, other times we will eat the food ourselves. So people give us food and we will also give food to others. Important activity in devotional service. So these activities are described pretty lakshanam, loving symptoms. So very nice to cultivate these six, six things. We're going to look at uh, some of these things now. Let's see. From the purport. In the previous verse, Srila Rupa Goswami advised one should renounce worldly association and keep company with the devotees. Sangatyagat Sato Vrite. 
So the International Society for Krishna Consciousness has been established to facilitate these six kinds of loving exchanges between devotees. The purpose of our movement, to facilitate these exchanges. Now we quote a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Some of you may know it, quite well-known verse. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Kore Udai Meaning that love of Krishna, Krishna Prema, right? Love of Krishna is eternally established. Nitya Siddha, it's eternally there in the heart. Of the of, it's in the hearts of all the living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. And when the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, then this love naturally awakens. Shravanadi, Shravanadi, hearing, Shuddha Chite, then the heart becomes purified. Karihi Udhai, we awaken, we awaken our Krishna consciousness. So we want to apply this principle, we, we, we want to understand that Krishna is present in the heart of all living entities and love of Krishna is there and if we can awaken that love of Krishna then it's a great service to Krishna. So therefore, Prabhupada in the purport writes, Since Krishna consciousness is inherent in every living entity, everyone should be given a chance to hear about Krishna. Not everybody wants to hear, we know that, but still we give them a chance. We have to give them all a chance. Then Describing this principle, guyam akyati prichati, remembering, inquiring confidentially and revealing your mind in confidence, Prabhupada states, one should inquire about the Krishna consciousness movement, open his mind in order to understand the situation of this material world. Thus. The Guyam Akyati Prichati principle can be served. Right? We don't want to talk prajalpa. It's not that all talking is prajalpa, but we have to know what to talk. The topic must be in relation to the Krishna consciousness movement, particularly about. The, the mission of the Krishna Consciousness Movement and how we can, how we can uh, distribute, how we can successfully propagate the mission of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So this is the principle, this is what we should be thinking, talking about, always thinking how to expand Krishna Consciousness, how to give it to more people. Another well-known verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. This comes when Sanatana Goswami came and surrendered to Lord Krishna. So he asks like this, Ke ami kenya maya jari tapatraya iha nahi jani kema hina haya Who am I? Ke ami, right? Who am I? Why do the threefold miseries always give me trouble? If I do not know this, how can I be benefited? So this was Sanatana Goswami's question to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course Sanatana Goswami knew these things, but he wanted to hear from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, he came before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and presented this inquiry to him. Mm. 
So this is a Krishna conscious process. It's based on inquiry. You meet the devotees and we inquire and we reveal our minds also. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Just a minute, something, my computer went back. <laughs> I have to go through these slides again. going too fast. Okay, here we are. I think some devotee's mic is on which is causing this to be. Okay, now we're speaking about the awakening of Krishna consciousness. We understand Krishna consciousness is there in everyone. We want to understand about awakening this Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada explains, from text number four, the life of the Krishna conscious society is nourished by these six types of loving exchange among the members. Uh, note that, among the members. Therefore, people must be given the chance to associate with the devotees of ISKCON because simply by reciprocating in the six ways mentioned above, an ordinary man can fully revive his dormant Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada mentions, he said, these six exchanges among the members, but then he says, we have to, the, the devotees have to give the chance to others. We have to give this opportunity to associate to others also. Not that we just only devotees, oh, I'm not going to give prasadam to him, he's not a devotee. Oh, I'm not going to give any gift to that person, he's not a devotee. <laughs> no, you can win people over very nicely, you give them some care, you show them some love and caring, and people can become very uh, attracted and impressed by Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada states, in the Bhagavad Gita 262, it is stated, Sangat Sanjayate Kama, one's desires and ambitions develop according to the company one keeps, right? Association, we were speaking about that, somebody was asking about association. So certainly we, the company we keep, you see the company we keep, we want to therefore keep intimate association with devotees who are in Krishna consciousness. And with others, we associate with them as, as we have to, we have to do what we have to, according to the situation. We have to be sociable. We cannot simply reject everybody. We have to know how to live in the world. Prabhupada could be very friendly with people. He could win people over. He was so friendly, so open to them. He bring, you know, and, and talk to them, what is your job, what is your business, oh, how many children you have, like, where are you from, and, you know, he would talk to them in general, make friends with them, and then, gradually, he would bring in Krishna consciousness, like that. One time in England, there was one man came, he was a, a world-famous motor racing car, a motor, motor racing driver. He would drive in the Formula One, in the Grand, the Grand Prix. He was very famous and he came and he met Prabhupada and Prabhupada would talk to him. So Prabhupada talked to him about when you're driving that sometimes, you know, you drive very fast, you must feel very close to death. So in this way, you know, the driver admitted that yes, any time when you're driving top speed, any time the car could go spinning off, you could be killed. And Prabhupada introduced to him Krishna consciousness, how the moment of death is very crucial. We want to think of Krishna. 
And then this way the, the motor racing driver became very in, impressed and appreciated Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada was very expert in dealing with all kinds of people. Another time when we put, when George Harrison purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor for us, at that time uh, Prabhupada, one morning Prabhupada was walking around the grounds. Well, they had a big grounds, you know, and there were some gardens there. So one man was employed to maintain the gardens and Prabhupada began to speak to him. The man was the gardener. He was taking care of the lawn, cutting the grass and looking after the trees and the plants. So Prabhupada was speaking to him <laughs> and the man, the man was saying something about how he had false teeth. And Prabhupada said, oh, the, uh, what was it? The, the man said, I have he said he had false teeth because he liked sweets. So Prabhupada said to the man, he said, yes, he said, I also like sweets. <laughs> Prabhupada was telling the man, because the man said, I like sweets, I eat sweets, so I, I've lost all my teeth, they all went rotten because I had so many sweets. Prabhupada said, well, I also like sweets, but he said, I eat milk sweets. And Prabhupada said, I have all my teeth. I don't have any false teeth. <laughs> and the man was impressed, you know. It made a very nice relationship. Prabhupada liked that. He was very sweet in dealing and talking with people. So we need to also develop this art because it helps people to come into Krishna consciousness. It's easy to make enemies. It's not so easy to make friends. So we have to learn the art. And it's nice sometimes you give people prasadam, you give some gift to people like that. So association is very important. We develop according to our association. Funny, we, we come. I agree. I agree. Huh? Okay. Okay. My computer goes back sometimes. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Dadati. Remember Dadati principle? Giving, right? Dadati pratigrinati. According to Vedic literature, it is enjoined. Charity should be given to the brahmanas. Why? Because they are engaged in higher cultivation of spiritual knowledge. Hmm. Yeah, traditionally, Vedic society, the brahmana would not work. He didn't go to factory. He didn't keep a job. How did he live? Well, he would simply depend on charity. You have Brahman, we read about Sudama Vipra. Sudama Vipra was very poor. He wouldn't even go and beg because he thought, I'm not a Brahmana. He was a Brahmana, but he didn't think of himself as a Brahmana. He was so humble. He thought, I'm not qualified to go and beg to, from anyone. I'm not a Brahmana. He was a Brahmana, but he didn't go and beg. And so some Brahmanas are like that. Madhavendra Puri also, he was a sannyasi, topmost brahmana. But he also didn't like to go and beg, he wouldn't beg. If someone gave him something, he would accept it. But he wouldn't go and ask people to give him. If somebody offered something to him, then only he would accept. And like that, sometimes, often he would fast and sometimes he would eat. So, Anyway, charity should be given to the brahmana because they're cultivating spiritual knowledge. And they should be so busy reading scriptures and worshipping deities, preaching Krishna consciousness. They don't have time to work in a job. They don't have time to think about going to factory and these things. So, of course, this is an, an Vedic society. Now it is not so easy to do like that. According to the four divisions of Varna and Ashram, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas are especially advised
to perform great ceremonial sacrifices and to distribute their accumulated money very liberally. Mm. So the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas, they're generally the ones with the money, <laughs> right? The Kshatriya kings like Maharaj Janak, he would give charity and he would give it without discrimination. He would give it freely, just like the rain would fall everywhere. So he would give charity to everyone. Hmm. Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj of Aisha, he had many, many cows. So when he would give charity, generally, he would give cows because he had nine like cows. So you give some charity, you give away cows. So particularly Kali Yuga, no Brahmanas, we have, a, we have Vaishyas, Kshatriyas practically none. But Vaishyas are there, so the business class, they are encouraged to distribute their accumulated wealth. We see Rupa Goswami, when Rupa Goswami retired, he had a lot of wealth and he divided it in a very nice standard, right? We're going to show that next. Uh, this is... Prabhupada's principle about Dadati giving in charity. He said, he said, now suppose if there are 100 persons in a society, so 25% student, 25% retired life, and 25% sannyasis, renounced order of life. Now, out of 100 persons, 75% they are engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord, right? The sannyasis, the retired vanaprastas, and the brahmacharis. So they're all serving the Supreme Lord. The rest, 25% who are grihastas, they are meant for sacrificing 50% of their income for this 75 <laughs> percent, right? This is, a, this is a whole program of Varnashram Dharma. That is a kind of spiritual communism, spiritual communism. Prabhupada coined this phrase, spiritual communism. Well, you know, in Prabhupada's time there was more communism, and, you know, the whole of the USSR was communist at the time. So Prabhupada spoke about spiritual communism. Communism, of course, the idea is everything belongs to the state. But the idea of spiritual communism is that everything belongs to Krishna. So it's still communism. Everything belongs to Krishna and everyone has a right to work together cooperatively according to their needs. Everyone should be provided for without discrimination. So similar principles to communism, but on a spiritual platform. So Prabhupada is explaining here, this is spiritual communism, that the, the people who are making all the money, hopefully, but I don't know, nowadays of course very difficult for people to make money, with lockdowns everywhere and the way the economy is at this time, it's become very difficult for people to make money. But the, ideally, the people who make a lot of money, they should give 50% of their income to support the sannyasis and to support the vanaprastas, the retired, and to support the brahmacharis. Of course, these sannyasis, and vanaprastas and brahmacharis, they should live very simply. They should not have a lot of material demands. Not like, you know, or some brahmachari comes up to the one of the grihastas and said, you know, I need a handphone. Can you get me a handphone? And the grihasta thinks, oh, maybe I get the boy, get this brahmachari a handphone. 
and you, the, you think the brahmachari is going to use it for preaching, but the brahmachari may use it to watch movies or listen to mundane music or something. You may not use it entirely for Krishna consciousness. So that's very wrong. That's a, this is one of the problems which come. Sometimes, you know, we have more, we're more greedy than, we actually, than what we actually need. So we have to be very careful to try to minimize the demands. We shouldn't put a great uh, stress on the grihastas that you have to support. We need this, we need that, you know, grihastas have to pay. And the grihastas themselves are struggling. No, they can, the grihastas are also going to be limited in what they can do. So it's the duty of the brahmacharis and sannyasis and vanaprastas also to live very simply and to minimize the bodily demands because they understand they're being supported by the mercy of the grihastas. This is from Prabhupada's lecture on Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada continues, for, for spiritual advancement of a society, the whole social order is so arranged that 75% of the people, they are engaged in the matter of spiritual advancement of knowledge. And 25% of the population, those who are earning, those who in family life, those who have got factories, business and so many things, they should sacrifice 50% of their income for these 75% persons who are engaged in spiritual emancipation. All right. So <laughs> this was Prabhupada's uh, explanation of how society should be organized. Brahmacharis, grihastas, uh, uh, vanaprastas also, vanaprastas also can be very demanding. You know, they can say, oh, I want, an, I need to re renovate my house, I need the new car, and like this, you know. They're retired, but still they're thinking, they, they have so many bodily demands, and they're thinking about making their, their home more comfortable, they're not thinking about the vairagya. They're not thinking about doing tapasya, which is what they should be thinking. One who is actually retired means you give up the material plans. You're not interested in developing yourself materially because you've retired. Retired from the material means to take up spiritual work. We don't stop everything, you don't do nothing. Sometimes people retire and they do nothing, they simply sit, sit and watch television and play cards and gamble and waste their time, do nothing with their life. But retirement is meant for taking up spiritual duties, for being busy in the practice of Krishna consciousness worshipping the deities, and also in retired life people should go and visit the holy places, go and stay in the holy places and travel to holy places. That's also part of the duty of the vanaprastas. They go and visit the holy places and get purified, get detached from the home. Don't just sit at home and wait for death to come. but. Prepare for death by becoming absorbed in Krishna consciousness. So this is the Dadati principle. We want to accept charity. We, we should be cautious not to ask more than what we actually need. But minimizing the maintenance. Oh. What the time? Yes, uh, okay. <laughs> we still have half an hour. All right. Well, just a bit more here on the Dadati principle. From Srimad Bhagavatam purport, in the brahmachari life, the training 
is sufficiently imparted so that one may understand that the world as property belongs to the Supreme Lord. No one therefore can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world. Therefore, in the life of a householder, which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment, one must give in charity for the service of the Lord. Everyone's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the Lord. Therefore, the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the Lord in the shape of transcendental loving service for Him. So brahmachari life is the training. Of course, nowadays people are not trained as brahmachari. People, they, they, they would laugh the thought of brahmachari. They're trained the other way. They're trained to be just hedonistic. They think uh, life is just meant for sense gratification. But brahmachari life is the best way to begin. Young men, young men trained as brahmacharis, then they'll go on to make good householders. If a man is not trained as a brahmachari, it will be very difficult for him to be peaceful and to be happy in family life. So brahmachari training is very essential for a young men. Not that they have to remain brahmacharis their whole life. Some men may do. Some men may go on from brahmachari to become sannyas. But generally, from brahmachari life, one will go on to become married, to become a grihastha. So the men are trained properly. The young men are trained properly. They, then they make good... Uh, they make a good husband and they're good in family, success can produce good children, Krishna conscious children, which are all very important. So Prabhupada is making the point in the purport here that everything belongs to the Lord and the energy which we get from the Lord should be returned in the shape of service for the Lord. And that service for the Lord is the duty of all ashrams. The Grihastha ashram also, they have a duty to serve the Lord. Another purport of Srimad Bhagavatam, in this fallen age of quarrel and dissension, if only the leading and wealthy persons of society agree to spend 50% of their income in the service of the Lord, as it is taught by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is absolute certainty of converting this hell of pandemonium to the transcendental abode of the Lord. So we're fortunate, we do see some wealthy people coming to the Krishna Consciousness Movement and dedica dedicating a major portion of their income for the service of Lord Krishna. Recently, of course, I think you all know how uh, Ambarish Prabhu from the Ford Motor Company, who is a direct disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he contributed something like $30 million to the construction of the temple, the TOVP, the temple in Mayapur here, which is going on. So that was certainly extremely generous on his part. And even his, he has two daughters and his own children also. They, each one donated $1 million. And another of a number of other men have also shown wonderful examples. I know there's, well, there's one devotee in Delhi, New Delhi, who's a disciple of His Holiness Tamal Krishna, uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami, Gopal Krishna Goswami's disciple. And he's a successful businessman and he's a major funder behind the temple construction which is going on in Delhi. 
a number of temples have been coming up there in Delhi. Because Delhi is a huge city and we need temples. People can't be moving around the whole city, just to have, can't just have one temple. Prabhupada, even in Prabhupada's time, he said, you need a temple in every village in Delhi. And there were something like 20 or more villages in Delhi. So this different suburbs, they're trying to put temples. Like we have a big temple which was supposed to open this year, 2020, in Rohini, in the subdivision called Rohini there in New Delhi. Rohini is like one of the biggest subdivision, housing, sub, housing divisions in, in Asia. Huge, huge, a huge area. So a big temple was meant to open this year. Of course, it's delayed because of the COVID-19. So the main funding comes from disciples of, Tamak, of Gopal Krishna Goswami. They're very successful businessmen and they contribute to the service of Krishna. So this is wonderful examples. And this is how it should be. Wealthy, leading persons, they have money, they have the money, they're happy to use it in the service of Krishna. We saw in Srila Prabhupada's time, George Harrison, at that time, in the 1970s, he was one of the most famous people on the planet. You know, a very world-famous person. And he was interested in Krishna consciousness. And he'd made friends with, the devotees had made friendship with him. And first of all, he bought marble for the temple there, in the, the first temple which opened in London, in Bury Place. He paid for the marble, and he went with the devotees to purchase it. And then later on, then he paid for the printing, the first printing of the Krishna book. Prabhupada wanted, he had no money to print the Krishna book. When George Harrison paid for it, the first printing. And then later on he purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor, which was a big house with a big estate with land, wonderful property, in the, just in the outskirts of London. So George Harrison used his wealth also for the service of Krishna. And of course he used his musical talents also for the service of Krishna, to do things like making the Govinda record. And Hare Krishna mantra music. Okay, so this is the Dati principle, giving for Krishna. Uh, when everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for the Lord's service, certainly austerity, cleanliness and mercy automatically ensue. And thus, the lost three legs of the personality of religion are automatically established. So, Prabhupada, is, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam in relation to the personality of Kali. Uh, personality was, of Kali was told he could reside wherever there are religious, irreligious activities going on. But he said, well, then there's nowhere in the kingdom of Maharaj Pariksit. I won't have anywhere to reside. So then Maharaj Pariksit gave concession that you can reside wherever there is hoarding of gold. Because wherever there is hoarding of gold, then there will automatically come intoxication, gambling, meat eating and illicit sex. That irreligious activities will come because of hoarding of gold. It's so, it has that effect. Accumulating more wealth than necessary leads to these kind of activities. So have to be very cautious about keeping wealth. And the best thing is to use it for the service of Krishna. So the question is asked, what is our biggest gift what do we have to give to people? You may say, well, we give books, right? But here we see, Prabhupada says, contributing or distributing the holy name of the Lord is a sublime example of contributing or giving charity. 
the Dadati principle. Right? And here you see the devotees. It's an old, it's an old picture, but Sankirtan devotees in Mexico, I think it is. And they're chanting like this. This is our charity, giving the holy name. And that's a major contribution to give people that, to give them the holy name. Let them hear the chanting. We we'll put here, this is a letter from Srila Prabhupada, and you can see it's sent to all ISKCON temple presidents. It's a very important letter, I'll read it through, everyone can listen. Now you must arrange in each temple, there must be sufficient stock of prasadam for distribution. You can keep first class cooks, two or three, and they should be always engaged. Whenever any guest comes, he must get prasad. This arrangement must be made that the cooks prepare 10, 20 servings at a time of puris and sabji, and you can add halava and pakoras, and the visitors must be supplied immediately. Whenever a gentleman comes, he must be served. As the 20 servings are being distributed, immediately the cooks prepare another 20 servings and store it. At the end of the day, if no one comes, our own men will take, so there is no loss. You cannot say, it is finished, it is not cooked yet, there is no supply for cooking, etc. This must be enforced rigidly. The temple is managed by Srimati Radharani, Lakshmiji. So why should there be want? Our philosophy is, if anyone comes, let him take prasad, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Everything is being supplied by Krishna. Krishna is not poor, so why should we deny them? This should be done at any cost, there is no difficulty, if it simply requires nice management. At the end of the day, you may sell or give away. If we believe that Krishna is providing and maintaining everyone, then why should we be misers? This means losing faith in Krishna and thinking that we are the doers and suppliers. We are confident Krishna will supply. Let the whole world come, we can feed them. So please do this nicely, begin at once. Hope, that, hope this makes you all in good health, your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, 19th of January, 1977. So Srila Prabhupada's desire, we must distribute prasadam at the temple. This is a Prabhupada Leela. Prabhupada Upendra is by, narrated by a devotee called Upendra. He was Prabhupada's personal servant. So he describes what happened, how when he got initiation from Prabhupada, he wanted to give a present to Prabhupada. So he gave Prabhupada, he had a baby blanket and a beach towel. And somehow he thought these would be nice things to give to Prabhupada. So he gave them to Prabhupada and Prabhupada looked at these things and said, these things are useless. <laughs> and he just put them down on the floor. So Pender said, he was, I was hurt, but I didn't say anything. And so anyway, he said, after a while he left, and then he said, the next day I went to see Swamiji during, and he saw that the beach towel and the baby blanket were on the floor, like rugs, so that the guests could come and they could sit down on them. So in this way, he said, I felt satisfied. I had found something useful for my offering. Prabhupada found some use for it. <laughs> okay, so... When everyone is taught to 
to sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for the Lord's service, certainly austerity, cleanliness, mercy ensue. This, the three legs of the personality of religion are automatically established. So Dadati, giving charity, and Pratigrinati, accepting. So Prabhupada said, unless one is very advanced, he is unable to utilize everyone's contribution to further the Krishna Consciousness Movement. We have to be very careful about accepting things. Very careful, one should very carefully avoid associating with both the Sahajyas, who are sometimes known as Vaishnavas, and the non-Vaishnavas or Avaishnavas. So, avoiding this kind of associate, association, six kinds of association. Hmm? Okay. Their association changes the transcendental devotional service of Lord Krishna into sense gratification. And when sense gratification enters the mind of a devotee, he is contaminated. Materialistic person who aspires after sense gratification cannot properly think of Krishna. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Very important, we want to be able to think of Krishna, but if we become contaminated through bad association, through too much materialistic atmosphere, then certainly it will be difficult to think of Krishna. Money is undoubtedly coming in great quantities, but we should not be attached to this money for sense gratification. Every cent should be spent for spreading Krishna consciousness movement, not for sense gratification. There is danger for a preacher when he receives great quantities of money, for as soon as he spends even a single cent of the collection for his personal sense gratification, he becomes a fallen victim. So this is the challenge facing preachers. Somebody may go out representing the Krishna Consciousness Movement and he may receive money, but he should not think that that money belongs to him. Rather that money belongs to the Krishna Consciousness Movement and it must be used for the service of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And Prabhupada is making the point, if we waste, if we spend even a single cent for our own sense gratification, then we become fallen. So very important, it's a very risky thing to accept charity. We must understand that we're accepted on, the, on behalf of Krishna, on behalf of the Krishna Consciousness Movement and not for our own self. It's very important. So we quote this famous saying which Prabhupada's own spiritual master said to him, if you ever get money, print books. And Prabhupada encouraged temples to do like that that when the temple got some money, they should use half the money, 50%, to print books, or purchase books rather, from the BBT. And he liked the temples to keep, keep their money in books. If the temple has a lot of money, then spend, buy books from the BBT and keep books in the temple. And if you keep books in the temple, then the devotees will go out and preach, and they can distribute books. But if you don't have any books, and you just sit around and eat. That's not good. Temple is a place for going out preaching. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati didn't like temples to keep money. He would come and spend it. He would put on a festival or he would put on, he would organize a, 
He would build a diorama exhibition, pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, like that. Rather than keeping money in the bank, use it for the service of Krishna. Another statement, Maya's most attractive feature is women and money. We Krishna conscious men have to deal with women and money in the course of preaching work. And the only prophylactic message measure to save us is not to accept them for our sense gratification. Prophylactic measure, prophylactic will protect us from being contaminated, is to not to accept them, not to accept money for our sense gratification. Then we shall remain strong enough. Materialistic people take everything for sense gratification. And Krishna conscious people take everything for Krishna's satisfaction. There is no fault in the thing as it is, namely money and women, but, if, but it becomes faulty by improper use. The improper use is to accept them for sense gratification. Prabhupada described that in a letter to his disciple. Gargamani Prabhu. So we have to understand how to use everything properly. Take some intelligence. So we ask you, is how are we doing? How much time? Uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. So uh, stating from the purport of text four, the life of the Krishna conscious society is nourished by these six types of loving exchanges among the members. We would like to know, we'd like to hear from you now, I've been talking a lot, we'd like to know about you. How successful has ISKCON been in facilitating these six loving exchanges? How, how, how successful have you been in your own ISKCON center, in your own ISKCON preaching field, how successful have you been in facilitating these kind of loving exchanges? So we open it up to you. Let's hear from you. We have a few minutes. We'll continue with this next, uh, in the next class tomorrow also. But I'd like to hear a little bit now. Priya Govinda Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, by distributing Krishna Prasadam and doing food for life. Can you tell me about it? Okay, uh, on Sundays we usually have the Sunday festivals, we cook Prasadam and congregation of devotees and outsiders also, they are welcomed, they come and visit us in the temple and other days, in the weekdays, we cook and take Put prashadam uh, outside, food for life, in schools, on the streets, marketplaces. Every day? Places. Every day? Yes, every, every day. Even now there is COVID, we are still doing this thing. All right. How many people do you feed? How many people can you feed? Uh, per day we usually feed 2,000, but now we have scaled it down uh, because there's so many cases here in Kenya. And now we are feeding around 500 only. 500 people a day, huh? Yes, all right. What, what do you feed them, Ugali? <laughs> no, Ugali nowadays. <laughs> we are feeding them with rice and uh, beans. And uh, uh, sometimes we also cook rotis also and give them. Mm -hmm. So the and food... Dal. Yeah. So the food is appreciated, huh? People line up to get it, is it? Yeah, they like it actually. Even we are featured uh, in a documentary that was being done by the Ministry of Health and uh, the President was invited and he saw how Hare Krishna were giving back to the buffet. They were featured on the national TV also. Do you, you go into the city and you, you just stand in one place and people come and get the food or you move around and distribute it? No, we, we have different locations or centers 
So people know where we are at different days. So they come to us. When they come, we chant Hare Krishna together before we feed them. On different days, you go to different places, huh? Yes, different places, not one place. So, but one day, one place. Yeah, one day, one place. Okay. We rotate. Well, so, so it's very good. 500 people a day can feed so many people. Who supports it? The congregation are providing, yeah? We have, yeah, we have congregation who are giving donations. Also, we also have a big farm, Takieka farm, uh, which provides also to get food uh, supply from there. And also, we have uh, other Hindu communities also the give donations. And oh, you have, you, have, you have your own farm producing food? Yeah. We have an aerobic farm now, nowadays. What do you grow? Uh, we grow all kinds of crops, all kinds of vegetables, and we have cows as well. Oh, wonderful. Oh. Okay, very nice to hear that so much food distribution, prasadam distribution is going on in Nairobi. Yes, Maharaj. But you also have lockdown there, is it? No, we don't have lockdown now, but we have the curfew, night curfew from uh, 9 p.m. up to 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Yeah, 3, exactly, 3 a.m. Because you have some COVID there, is it? Yeah, COVID now is taking toll now, yeah. Uh, so we are cautious. And also we have strict measures in the temple as well. Okay, thank you very much. Very nice. Anybody else like to volunteer here? Yes, ma'am. Who? Dilip Kuntia. Dilip Kuntia. Dilip Kuntia. Dilip Kuntia. Yes, Hari Krishna. Yes. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, here in Bhubaneswar, uh, like uh, in this lockdown time, uh, the temples are almost closed and the government has not yet allowed the temples to open. But in our youth hospitals here in Bhubaneswar, we are focusing on preaching to youth and every Sunday uh, there are around 8 to uh, 9 uh, youth hostels over here and every Sunday we uh, make uh, programs for youth in ways around 20 to 30 uh, youth come to every hostels and we give them prasadam and we discuss certain basic principles of Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita uh, and try to uh, you know nourish their Krishna consciousness and give some basic ideas of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you Prabhu. So youth preaching going on in Bhubaneswar, cultivating the young people, very important. The youth preaching, the children and the youth, very important preaching. Yes, someone else? Rahul Agarwal. Rahul Agarwal. Yes, Hare Krishna. We, we uh, I'm again from Bhubaneswar itself, and uh, like we have this Sunday phase programs where youth used to come. Apart from that, we what usually we see that there are temple devotees who usually visit our base, and we have special dedicated guest rooms for them as well, where we ourselves can go can talk with them confidentially. We can share our hearts and can uh, you know discuss matters which are really important for uh, Krishna consciousness again uh, when there are some festivals uh, if someone special is some birthdays or any other festival all of us get together we come and we exchange uh, sweet words we glorify them and then there are you know kirtans and other things which really uh, helps us uh, gaining interest in Krishna consciousness as these are the symptoms of love that we uh, really get from the devotees of temples, from other is devotees who are staying over here. And this is how it goes on in Bhubaneswar right now, it's because of lockdown. Okay. And is preaching also going on all over Orissa? Is that similar yes, activities going on all over? It's been going all over Orissa. Uh, there are different uh, very, you know, districts and all where we are approaching people and they are taking it seriously, they are appreciating our efforts, they are appreciating the Mahamantras. Okay. We again have plans of village preaching right now, we are, we are planning to do it as well. 
The because Puri, Jagannath Puri has been quite badly affected, right? A lot of people died even there from COVID-19. Uh, yes, Maharaj, it was it is a situation. That's the reason uh, it not get sure when the Jagannath Puri is opening because there are a lot of complications over there. But we have devotees there in Puri working, doing some program, distribution, prasadam. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Uh, the prasadam distribution is continuously going on. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll stop here now and uh, we'll continue tomorrow night. We'd like to ask everyone, you can please think more about these loving exchanges and think about how successful or maybe you'd like to talk more about, you know, dissatisfaction, things you maybe you'd like to see us do better, where, where we can improve. You can maybe talk more about areas which need to be developed, how we're not fulfilling Prabhupada's uh, desires. What areas can we do more? So both sides are there, positive, negative. I'd like to hear from you tomorrow when we continue the class tomorrow evening. But the time is up now. So we'll meet tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Take them through it.